The Neubel Fahrzeug, which translates roughly as new construction vehicle, was Germany's attempt at producing a multi-turreted heavy tank as other nations had heavy tanks in production and it was also a great chance for propaganda as the idea for bigger is better was still in the mindset for tanks which we know now doesn't translate to success on the battlefield. In total there were three different types of five tanks built though two were scrapped as they were made from inferior materials. The tanks weighed around 23 tons which was heavy for the time but by the end of the war would be considered a medium tank at best. Its armour ranged from 30mm to 20mm which was pretty light and would still only be effective at stopping small arms and light explosives and had no chance of stopping AT weapons or anti-tank guns. The armament of the main turret was a 75mm short barrels main gun with a coaxial 37mm gun. Also there were two MG34 machine gun turrets which were actually Panzer 1 turrets that were taken off and converted to fit the tank. There was one placed at the front and one at the back to give the tank a great degree of protection against infantry. Unfortunately its maximum speed was only 18 miles an hour in perfect conditions which means it most likely would be moving around between 8 or 10 miles per hour which means it was very slow and also to crew these massive multi-turreted beasts would take six men for effective operation of the tank. So how did they fare in combat? Well they were doomed from the start it seems as when they were tested at the tank proving grounds at put loss they performed moderately well but due to their very slow speed and the German army favouring mobility over firepower which was connected to the Blitzkrieg stratagem, the Nobel Fahrzeug programme was halted and they were to be relegated to be used for propaganda and parades. But then, all three were combined into the Panzerzug Hoitzmann Company, named after their commander, Lieutenant Hans Hoitzmann, and this company was sent to join the invasion of Norway. The tank's main jo job in Norway was to arrive at the end of the battle and drive through the streets of the nearest town or city as a show of force to help spread rumours of German heavy tank battalions being used to cause fear in the enemy forces and any potential partisans. The only actual combat I could find information on was that the tank helped with the attack on the village of Kavarn against Norwegian and British troops. And while they were assaulting the village, British artillery fire immobilised the tank. But the tank continued to fire on the enemy until the crew realised there was no chance of getting the tank safely recovered and they then destroyed it themselves to stop it being captured by British or Norwegian forces. After their short time of active combat, they were then posted at the Akershus Fortress at Oslo in Norway as a garrison unit. After Norway, the surviving two tanks of the company were recalled and then the rumours take over. Some say they were destroyed by Allied bombing campaigns. Others say that they were scrapped in 1942 by the Germans. Some veteran memoirs claim that they fought on the Eastern Front. There's also claims that they fought in the defence of Berlin in 1945. And then some other evidence points to them being used as target practice to train Volkstrom units before the Battle of Berlin. All we know to this day is that not a single tank survived the war, which is a shame as it may have not been the most effective tank, but in my opinion it had a fantastic style to it. It may have been an armoured behemoth, but it was an armoured behemoth that looked pretty damn cool. But unfortunately we'll probably never know the full story, but it does make an interesting read if you go and look for the information yourself.